G'day mates. You would assume that if you're having a lot of mass leak, dropping your CPAP pressure is gonna help, right? Less pressure, less airflow, less mass leaks. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Well, you know what they say about assumptions. They make an ass out of you and not me on this occasion. They made an ass out of the doctor who was trying to help Donna. She's a Sleep HQ Pro member, and she's complaining about all these mass leaks. And the doctor's like, okay, no worries, we'll drop your pressure, drop your pressure, drop your pressure, drop your pressure. But it was actually making things worse. That's what I wanna show you today on Sleep HQ. Boom, instant access to Donna's detailed therapy dashboard. And what's ironic is this is way more information than most clinicians or doctors normally receive. So let's scroll down and we can see at what stage during the night these leaks were occurring. All right, here's the high resolution leak rate trace here in yellow. And it looks like we've got some periods here and also some periods of leak here. Now we can zoom in by just clicking and dragging across a section of interest. And here it is. See these spikes here, here, big ones here. Look at this, up at 100 liters per minute, 73, once again, 100. It's a lot of leak. It's gonna be very difficult sleeping when your mask is leaking like this. And the pressure is up here at nine centimeters, which is only a moderate pressure really. As you know, CPAP machines can get right up to 20, by levels even higher. And I just quickly wanna check out her settings. So her pressure max is nine centimeters. Yeah, it can't go above nine. And this is what the doctor was doing. He was dropping the pressure down to try and fix the leak. However, if we zoom out, we can come across to this section here. Once again, the pressure is up here at nine, but look, no mass leak. Okay. Yellow's gone. So that says to me, well, the mask can seal at nine centimeters, but something is causing those leaks. Let's go back and check it out. Now on the breathing trace here in blue, you can see we have these yellow blocks. These are obstructive apnea events where Donna is not breathing. 46 seconds this one, 32 seconds, 42 seconds. And if you look closely right now, what you can see is the leak spiking. Yeah, it was down here at six, and then it spikes directly after these obstructive events when she's not breathing. There's one here. Look, not breathing, not breathing, not breathing. Then all of a sudden, up it goes. Once again here, jumps up. Once again here, it jumps up. So it's actually Donna's untreated sleep apnea, which is causing the issue here. Because when she stops breathing for that extended period of time, 40, 50 seconds, at the end of that apnea, she takes these great big deep fast breaths. Yeah. And when she does so, you've got the machine blowing in air. Donna is breathing very fast up against that pressure. So the pressure inside the mask increases and it bursts out the side of the seal. So Donna's doctor just keeps dropping the pressure going, surely if I keep dropping the pressure at some point the mask is gonna seal. But it's just making things worse because the further that pressure drops, the more obstructive apnea she's having, the more mask leak. It's doing the opposite. And it's not the doctor's fault because they're all flying blind. Like I said, they don't have access to this information. So they don't know what they're doing. It's as simple as that. Now, while I've got you here, I wanna show you something else. You can see here, we have this respiratory event flagged here. You see the breathing gets very shallow, just like here. But this time it's called RERA, R-E-R-A. Over here it was O-A, obstructive apnea. This time it's RERA. Now, RERA, as you can see right here, stands for Respiratory Effort Related Arousal. Arousal means you're waking up out of sleep and it's caused by your breathing, your respiratory, okay? Breathing up very shallow. You can see this great big jump here in the upper airway resistance. 
right, at this point in time, and then we get these deep breaths after this event. Your brain woke up out of sleep. And if we scroll forward here, you can see we have another obstructive event here. And then look, here's another one, Rira. And there's another one here that was missed. And if we scroll forward a bit more, you can see also missed one here, missed one here, missed one here. <laughs> yeah, it's the same pattern. We get a narrowing of the airway, an increase in the airflow resistance followed by these great big breaths here and here. And this is all sleep disturbance. And the reason it's important is because the rearers, the ones that they actually mark, are not included in your apnea hypopnea index count. So if we come up here, the doctor's looking at this number here, yeah, 4.67, he's going, okay, it's under five, she's considered treated, I can keep dropping her pressure down, but this number doesn't include the rearers, and it certainly doesn't include all the missed events. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't they include the rearers? And count them up and add them to this apnea hypopnea index if they're causing sleep disturbance. Wouldn't that make sense? Yes, it would. However, it would cause this number to rise. And the manufacturers don't want that. They want the doctors thinking that the device is doing a good job treating sleep apnea. And if this number <laughs> starts to go up with all the rearers and they actually start counting all these missed events properly, well, the results on paper aren't gonna to look too crash hot, are they? And this is why we love Sleep HQ, because we don't need to go off this number. We're not flying blind, we have X-ray vision, so you can make good treatment decisions. It's as simple as that. And instead of dropping the pressure, like this doctor is doing right now, we can increase Donna's pressure, fix her leaks, fix her untreated sleep apnea, fix these rearers that are not even rearers, they're obstructive apneas, and just fix her sleep, which is what it's all about. And this is the reason compliance rates haven't changed in 20 years, because all the doctors and all the clinicians are still flying blind, and they don't need to. It's right here, right here.